So now I would like to welcome Mr. Adel Abdel from Egypt. He's going to be talking about a very, very interesting topic, very relevant topic as well. It's privacy in the age of big data and AI. And he's going to give us a technical perspective of GDPR and what that entails. So GDPR is going to become very popular. A little introduction about Mr. Adel. So Adele, Abdel, registered ITU slash ARCC cybersecurity expert, has over 24 years of experience in the IT and cybersecurity fields, spending most of his career in information security consultation and training. Adele is globally recognized as a security top influencer, IFSEC Global Influencers in Security and FIRE 2019 in the category Security Thought Leadership. Adele is an international certified trainer for Microsoft, IAC Square, ISACA, PECB, CertNexus, and CIW, who has delivered hundreds of official training courses and workshops in a stride to continually raise cybersecurity awareness. Adele has dedicated hundreds of hours to voluntary work, providing the governmental sector, NGOs, and technical communities with his experience and knowledge in the field. I personally am very excited about Adele's presentation because he was uh, telling me about a lot of what he's going to cover. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Over to you, Adel. The stage is yours. Thank you, Ajita. Hello, everybody. It's really my pleasure uh, to be with you today. Uh, hopefully, you enjoy my session. Uh, my session is about privacy, the age of big data and artificial intelligence. OK, uh, actually, it's the topic of the day uh, and every day. OK, first of all, I would like to start with a short video uh, showing you how uh, technology became very, very close to our day-to-day -day life, okay? som är unik och kan som du alltid har med dig. Det är ingen risk att du förlorar. Det är... Så du kan hålla en ögon på mig? It is simply how technology could be involved in our day-to-day -day life today. And I think you uh, read a lot of articles about Corona and how to track infected people and how to identify those who has uh, no infection with Corona, maybe with a chip from Microsoft, as Bill Gates said before. Uh, however, uh, this is how technology be involved uh, in our life. Uh, this is just a simple graph showing you uh, the, the concept of smart home, which is another threat for uh, the, the privacy. Uh, smart home, you have smart TV, you have smart car, you have uh, navigation, you have uh, Xbox, PlayStation, something like that. Everything around your, your life is connected to the Internet. There was an American study uh, about statistics for usage of the Internet saying an average family of uh, like uh, five persons may have 38 different points to Internet connectivity. So average home has uh, five persons as a family, may have 38 different points of connectivity, means different point of uh, ha maybe hacking or uh, threats. How we exchange information to the internet, we have billions of uh, people are using the internet almost every minute. And this is one of the recent graphs speaking about uh, how many or what is the amount of data being exchanged to the internet every 60 seconds. Millions of messages, millions of uh, images, 
uh, exchanged every single minute to the internet, including a lot of information. And actually, before the session time is limited, I cannot go for some practical demo to show you what kind of information could be extracted from such uh, one image, uh, like location, like serial number of the camera, like date, uh, maybe email or phone number as well. Okay, so this is how it looks like. One of the new recently uh, arising threats to the concept of the privacy again is 5G network. With the 5G, we have a very high speed network. It's an extremely fast network where we have machine to machine communication. I mean, smartwatch may be communicating your smart, with your smartphone and communicating with your smart speaker, with your smart uh, TV as well. Okay? You cannot imagine how many devices being connected together, exchanging your information for what is exceeding your level of imagination about the nature of the data exchanged. I will go with you for the details soon. Okay, this is how 5G is uh, providing the world with a great connectivity, but great threats for sec both security and privacy as well. Okay, and as you know, it's, it's a smart wallet, smart shopping, smart parking, smart uh, smart uh, business, uh, everything is smart, okay? And I'm sorry to say, maybe the only stupid uh, thing is the behavior of uh, users, okay? Now I will explore with you a group of uh, application. It's trying to, I will go fast as, ca as I can because I have uh, many slides, but it will take like few seconds, everyone, to show you to what extent your privacy is exposed for uh, violation. Okay, this one of uh, smart wallets. Okay, it's just to pay or to transfer money between you and maybe other people. And this smart wallets, as you can see, it needs. Okay, it needs to uh, to, uh, to to have a copy of your contacts, call logs, phone, photos, and the media camera as well maybe some info some requirements is justified and some other requirements cannot be justified okay uh, this is an aviation it's egypt air i'm from egypt and this is why i have many examples from egyptian uh, applications okay uh, this is how uh, egypt air is uh, complying to gdpr for the privacy this is just an application to pack up and restore your messages however it, it asks you to uh, give an access for being the default SMS application. So all your SMSs, regardless is it in backup or restore, will be uploaded for the cloud for this application. Okay. A message warning you, Google Maps, this is iPhone, Google Maps, using the location in the background. Although you have no application currently needs to access your location, but Google Maps in the background is accessing your location. This is an alert. Okay. Smartwatches, Siri, okay? This is one of the funny examples where you need, you may have like one meter distance between you and your printer in your home or your office. However, this is a message telling you your document may pass through one or more servers on its way to the printer. Using the internet to print may expose your confidential documents and your privacy as well for uh, maybe some violation or attacks when your data will be stored in the cloud, okay? Tens of examples everywhere. One of Facebook apps is asking you to tell the application where is your primary school, where is your secondary school, so they can, uh, let us say, they can uh, find your colleagues and your friends in early days in school. It's very good from social perspective, but from privacy perspective, you are exposing everything about yourself, okay? Uh, one of application, this graphs is something old, but I keep it for the, for showing you the concept of uh, integration between true color, which is the most uh, popular uh, number identification application globally recognized when it's connected to the LinkedIn and Facebook together. Now it's only it is not only about your phone number and your name to be automatically identified. Okay, but it's also could be connected to your LinkedIn professional profile, like your uh, career history and your Facebook uh, photo or friend list and so on. So can you imagine the interaction between your phone number, your social network and like Facebook 
your professional career, your CV, your capabilities, your skills like LinkedIn and so on. Okay, one of, of this application, this true caller is telling me that this person named Yahya, when Yahya was calling me in a day, she, she told me that between you and Yahya, there is 52 contact in common. So now you, when you have a call from some person, you may recognize automatically how many people knows both of you at the same time. Okay. This one is an old again uh, interfaces for Viber application. However, I keep it intentionally because it has more detailed explanation about what Viber is doing in your phone. As you can see, Viber is accessing your storage. Viber is accessing your messages. Viber is accessing your, as you can see, okay, can take videos and photos without your approval or before having your approval as well. Can access your location. Even very simple applications like flashlight app, just a flashlight, they can access your location, your photos, your media, everything like that. Okay, now I would like to go more, uh, let's just say more critical example, especially for Google and Facebook as well. As you can see, this is an, uh, a configuration interface for Google. As you can see, Google is asking you to automatically detect your face in photos and uh, and videos and tell people you know to tag you. you. I'm not sure if you know or not the accuracy of face recognition in Google and Facebook it exceed 98%. I will show you later something based on the artificial intelligence to show you to what extent it's extremely risk to have uh, such features allowed. It's not only about your photos and your personal data. You cannot imagine that Google, for example, is connected to the International Aviation uh, Authority, which is IATA, okay? Uh, it happened a time I was in the airport and my flight got delayed for 45 minutes, okay? And it was Egypt Air flight, okay? However, before having this official announcement in the airport, I received a message or alert in my phone from Google telling me Egypt Air flight number 758 will be delayed 45 minutes, okay? However, later on, maybe 10 minutes later, the airport announced, announced that flight will be delayed. For the, this time, uh, frankly speaking, I was uh, feeling like shocked. How Google identifies the flight will be delayed and later on I recognized and I realized that Google is connected to uh, the international aviation database so they can understand if the flight will be delayed or whatever or cancelled for example and Google can automatically read your emails identifying your electronic ticket okay everything like that so this is why Google identifies that I have a flight in this flight number this is why Google again sent me this alert for uh, informing me my flight will be delayed Google has maps for all all maps and all airports in the world, okay? Another integration for your information, it looks like this is named information aggregation. This piece of information collected together to show you the big picture, okay? I have an, a conference in uh, Frankfurt around two years ago, and when I arrived at the airport, I just checked the Google Maps to know the distance and uh, the transportation between the airport and the hotel. I was checking the distance and I got this graph, as you can see. They told me that Frankfurt uh, Marriott Hotel, uh, you can take that train, it will take 40, uh, 28 minutes. Uh, however, you have four nights, you, you, you will check in today and you have the reservation from 4th, 5th, uh, 1st of April till 4th of April. Automatically collected, integrated from my emails. Google is extracting data from your email, okay? Google services. You may have like a notification from Google asking you to give Google. I'm sorry, I will go back just to something. Can you see this one? In some cases, Google Maps will ask you to give some quick answers about some questions. Okay, and as you can see, Google saying or is saying we need some human help. Automatically, Google identify I'm in a restaurant. 
and this is, was in, in Netherlands, by the way, okay? And I got this question, if you, so you can have some question like if this uh, restaurant has uh, takeaway meals, have kids meal, have special drinks, okay? Have wine or whatever, okay? This is how it would look like. Is this a good place for quick uh, diet? Uh, okay, can you have coffee there? Does this place serve wine and so on? After finishing, you have like reward points, and this is attract people, especially young people, to share more and more information. Because when you collect a specific amount of points, you can have some free games. You may have uh, some uh, different awards from Google Store. And then when you approve to be Google Local Guide, okay, Google will get, show you this graph. Like, would you allow me to take pictures and videos? Definitely. This is, if you said allow, you are allowing Google Maps to take photos and videos without your intervention. Google Maps automatically will capture photos and videos, okay? Would you allow Google Maps to record the audio? This is why in some cases you were discussing something with someone and sooner you will have some ads about what you were discussing with your friend maybe. Uh, like uh, speaking about a new laptop, maybe a new application, and uh, sooner you will have some advertisement in Google about what you were speaking about. Okay, Google is aggregating data from everywhere, and this this example is one of the funny example. I ordered a book. I was in Brussels, uh, as I remember, around two years ago. Okay, and I ordered the book about GDPR. Google received the uh, Google Mail received my email informing me about the shipment. Amazon told me we shipped your uh, your book. Google is asking me, would you like Google to follow up the, the shipment or to do the tracking on behalf of you? Can you imagine? Okay. And this is looks like the complete story of my trip. Google told me you arrived today in 10th of December. Okay, you left from Egypt uh, Cairo Airport to the Brussels, you took Egypt Air as an airline and it was Terminal 3 and you will go back for Cairo at this date. Why I have two dates? Because I have initial date and then I updated my date once again. This is why I have two different dates. Google is tracking everything from emails, reading, extracting information, aggregate information and the final result will be as you can see now. And as a continuous uh, information conclusion from Google, okay? Now, as you can see, they detected the hotel where I was, I was staying, okay? And the, where I checked in, and when I will check out, and the reservation number, everything. If you have a smart home devices, like having smart speaker, like having smart, uh, maybe smart bulb, okay? Uh, you need to manage everything from what is named the Google Home, if you have some Google smart devices, even smart watch like this one. Okay, so as you can see, your device information, we will store information about contact, calendar, application, music, and other data from your device. So your preferences, if you need, or if you would like to listen to romantic music, a pop, uh, or whatever, whatever kind of music, your favorite movies will be stored. It's about continuous analysis for your behavior, identifying everything about yourself. Okay, and again, as you can see, this is once I tried to uh, activate my smart speaker, it was only smart speaker, okay? Google told me not only my uh, normal mail, another email detect all my Gmail. This one is not a Gmail, however, it is Gmail based. This is why Google extract all my Gmail accounts and asking me if I would like to synchronize contacts from those accounts with the smart speaker application. Okay. Google will ask you how many rooms in your home, where you are placing your speaker. Do you have any family member would like to, to control the speaker? So if you need only your son or your wife to control the speaker with you, you have to enter his phone, his email, and so on. So Google is identifying your home, your family members, phone numbers, email addresses, photos, everything. Okay. In addition, we have Google partners. 
Google is not only performing all services through Google application. Google has some partners to share information with, maybe for technical reason, maybe for advertisement reason as well. Okay. I'm just going something faster. Okay. This is calendar in iPhone. However, allow calendar to access your location. What is the justification to have the calendar to access my location? It's okay. And this is Google Assistant where you have everything conducted with voice commands. We can open just Google Assistant and ask Google for whatever. What is the dollar exchange rate today? What is the weather in uh, Amsterdam tomorrow? Okay, and so on. All your queries, your voice recognition will be stored in uh, will be stored in Google Cloud for later processing. And please have a look for this one. I have read arrows because it's critical. When you have Google Translator to translate a document, it could be a confidential one. It could be top confidential document and you have Google Translator to translate the document through the camera, not the text, okay? Google is keeping the image for granting you more improved service. You got it? One of the great Google uh, innovations is Google Lens application. Although I'm enjoying using this app, but again, it's about the privacy. Can you imagine that this app is able to detect whatever uh, device, maybe food, maybe dress, maybe uh, paper, maybe a person, human, okay? When you have this Google Lens app, you can have a photo for whatever, and then Google can tell you what is this or who is this person. Definitely the accuracy of this uh, for Products for food is high, comparing with person for the time being. But my expectation is it will be very soon, very effective when you just have a Google Lens and then you can have a photo for whatever person, Google may identify this person. How this happened, I will show you this very soon. About Google location, many people saying, I'm not allowing any app to access my location. However, Google is the operating system. Google or, or Android is the operating system. And this is one of news from a trusted website. Google admit it track user location data even when setting was turned off. Okay. A very old interface from Facebook configuration. Okay, believe me, you will never have this one again because it was very clear to tell you if you need to uncheck information gathered by uh, by Facebook about your life, if you would like to uncheck this to be gathered from Facebook, okay, it's okay. However, in this case, as you can see, if you don't want apps and the websites to access categories of information like these categories, okay, you can turn off. However, remember, but remember, you will not be able to use any games or apps yourself. It looks like give me your data, to give me your serv uh, my service, sorry, to give you my service. Facebook, let's move for Facebook after Google. Okay, now we have some information. Once I arrived in Amsterdam earlier, uh, maybe two, day, two years ago, okay, I have this message, welcome to Amsterdam. And then Facebook started to offer for me a list of my friends and telling me which one visited how many places in Amsterdam. I think you cannot imagine that if I if I am your friend and you, you visited Amsterdam before, you cannot imagine that when I arrive to Amsterdam, Facebook will inform me that you have you have been there and you visited XYZ of locations. Okay? Nobody can imagine that and definitely I shaded names of my friend to keep their privacy. And then when I click one of them, in this one, when I click one of them, I can identify this person visited old Amsterdam and this museum at that date and that time. It's really shocking information. Okay, another one, I have been in Brussels and once I arrived in Brussels, the same story happened once again and I have a big shade for their names. But again, I can click every one by one to know where the, uh, sorry, what they visited or where they visited earlier. Another challenge is Facebook bots. Okay, hopefully you understand what is Facebook bot. Facebook bot simply is 
ability to have Facebook as a platform to do business. And this is RMX, the courier RMX like DHL, okay, or UBS. And I received a message telling me, you have a new shipment, please click this link to know how to receive. And when I click this, this one, I'm sorry because this is in Arabic, but it's a practical example. When I click this link, I just shared my very personal information, okay? I have this bot to chat with me, asking me, please start uh, where you need to receive your credit card, the renewal of the credit card in home or office. When I said home, they asked me to open location to locate the building and then asked me to have the floor number and uh, apartment number and so on till I have the conclusion. So you will receive your HSBC renewal card number, blah, 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 and so on. Now Facebook has a new era of information to be collected about yourself. Windows, okay. Allow me to skip this one, okay. Maybe a presentation will be available for you later. This about how Facebook ads are working, but I will jump for this to go for something more important. This is what is named the Facebook algorithms. Facebook algorithms. This is another very critical analytical application can analyze every single action every single movement in your life you are doing okay as you can see when you share a post facebook can realize you love this so much okay when you comment it's a little uh let's say engagement engagement from your side when you like okay it's it has another meaning no action, hide, post, unfollow. So your reaction is analyzed to understand to what extent you are involved in this topic, you are interested, you are pro this topic. Okay. Hopefully you remember earlier we have only like. Why we have this wide range of emojis, wide range of ways to express yourself because facebook would like to know when you have this post earlier you just would like to make like maybe you, you like the post because you need to highlight you are in or you need to highlight you are against this one but you don't have this diversity of emojis to express now you have wide range so facebook can understand very accurately are you happy okay you feel like love you feel some emotion Okay, you are angry, you are sad, okay, or whatever else. And this is the, the last, the latest one. It's more about analytical. And this is maybe an old information, but not everyone is knowing. Uh, Facebook is sorry for conducting secret psychological experiments on users. This is a year. This is another year. Again, Facebook uh, conducted secret psychological experiments third year okay since 2012 and continuously till 2020 this book is conducting such psychological uh, experiments okay another one can you see I, I have many years with the same concept and it's telegraph it's uh, washington post it's very reputable sources of information okay and okay another era which is smart or wearable electronics, wearable electronics like like smartwatches or uh, uh, some devices could be used to calculate your calories, your heartbeat, uh, and so on. Okay, as you can see, and this is just an introduction for the GDPR uh, part of the session. Now, if you have a Samsung Health application to integrate with your Samsung smartwatch, in this case, you need to have consent to process your health data. In case you are visiting some websites, websites are asking you to have a consent for processing your data as well. Okay. However, if you have this app like heart rate app, okay, this is smart watch can do the following. Can you have to fill this information, your birth date, okay, your medical notes, if any, uh, what you ate today. To calculate the calories you ate and how many calories has been burned okay and this is a very funny one as you can see we have uh, this is the heart rate and then you have a question what is the current status 
Are you standing up? Are you sitting down? Okay, are you doing uh, uh, exercise? Oh, and in the other era, when you have this heart rate, you, have, you were angry, excited, sad, angry, or whatever. So later on, when, you, when the watch detected the same heart rate, it could detect you are angry, or it could detect you, you have fun now, or whatever else. Okay, and for the third time, we have your fingerprint, your iris scan, your face recognition, which is biometric data. In case one of audience has a legal background about GDPR, this is recognized and classified as uh, a sensitive data. This is, has a special penalties and special precautions to be protected in case you have GDPR compliance. Sooner, maybe, or recently, like uh, two weeks ago, we have this app spread through the Facebook like a campaign. Okay? Can you imagine how many millions of people uploaded their photos for this app? It named, as you can see, it named Photo Lab. Photo Lab. This Photo Lab can give some uh, good uh, add ons for your photo or good effects for your photo. Millions, believe me, or tens of millions of people uploaded their photos for free. Such application is collected photos, is applying uh, artificial intelligence techniques over the photos giving you a great advantages from the perspective of photo editing. However, on the other hand, artificial intelligence maturity became more and more and more uh, uh, great. This is why it, it, it has reflection on how Facebook, Google, or other application can identify your photo. Remember my example about Google Lens earlier. Another one, this is maybe uh, something older than this photo lab, it's face app, and it, it has the same, okay? And as you can see, they are saying they have 80 million plus users, and definitely each person uploaded at least tens of images for his family to have such an effect, like removing the hair, adding hair, have glasses, no glasses, changes the color uh, of the hair, and so on. See your photo after uh, 20 years in the future, and so on. This is one of the great examples about how artificial intelligence uh, is working now. This site is named This Person Does Not Exist. Okay, you can visit this site uh, whenever you, you have time. This person does not exist. Every time you refresh the page, you will receive a, a, a photo like this one. And can you imagine this photo is created by computers? This person, not a real person. It's really a very impressive result for having uh, the artificial intelligence to process our data. Millions of millions of photos is uploaded. Cloud processing is a huge processing power. And by the end of the day, it looks like that. This is the end result. So with the accuracy of such photo, you can have the same uh, impression how your identity could be recognized in the near future. And this is another photo from the site. I think it's impossible for any one to say this is not a real person. It's artificial intelligence. After having millions of millions of photos uploaded for applications such as Face App or Photo Lab, okay, this is the end result. Now let us have some GDPR technical perspective, and I will take it as fast as I can because my main concern is to highlight the privacy issue issues in the in the age of big data and artificial intelligence. Okay, from GDPR point of view, how GDPR is trying to protect from technical perspective such risks against such risks. Okay, as you can see, first of all, this is a Facebook uh, is telling you, okay, uh, we have data from partners. We are sharing data with our partners. Would you like to have face recognition data to be recorded in Facebook or not? Definitely, I'm not here to read this uh, interfaces. I'm just showing you how GDPR reflected in privacy statement for the major uh, social networks player like Facebook, Google, Twitter, and so on. Okay, what kind of data we may collect? It it looks like information for your consent. You to have any application based on GDPR collected your data 
store your data, process your data, you have to provide a very explicit consent. And this is how Facebook is telling you what kind of data might be collected, the data you made, like purchase online or downloaded apps, what you the links you clicked on, okay, and so on. So let us go more into, okay. GDPR has like a scope and it identifies mainly six areas. The first one is data subject rights. Your rights as an individual, you are the owner of your private data. You have you are the subject for this in the, under this context, and this is your rights. Your rights is to have uh, to have uh, explicit information about why your data will be collected, why legitimate purpose, how it will be collected, legitimate collection process, okay, or stored. And a part of your right is to have. Uh, possibility to ask for report. This is how GDPR affected WhatsApp, for example, one of example, to have to, you can go for WhatsApp configuration and setting to request a report about everything you did. This is not including messages and photos and videos you shared, but it looks like a transaction log. So you can request such a report. Okay. Second, uh, point in GDPR scope is privacy principle. One of the major privacy principle is privacy by design, privacy by default. So now you cannot collect my location by default until I disable this one. You have to disable collection of the location information till I approve this one. And definitely this is a very big issue. This is maybe a, a completely uh, different uh, uh, session or uh, speech. Okay, however, now we are focusing on privacy by design, privacy by default, security by design, security by default as well. Okay, third point, any organization has more than 250 person has to appoint data protection officer to have this uh, duties appointed for some person. Okay, you have to conduct what we name data protection impact assessment or privacy impact assessment. Last two slides in this presentation will tell you some uh, excellent websites where you can have some templates, tools, references, if you would like to apply some GDPR practices or to know more about GDPR. Okay, from technical perspective, the fifth one is GDPR technical cybersecurity requirement. Okay, we have a wide range of uh, security techniques could be implemented to maintain uh, our privacy or as a controller or processor. What is controller? Controller is the organization, okay, or maybe a natural person who define what data should be collected, where the data will be stored, how to secure the data. Okay, this is named controller. Processor is when you have someone to process your data as a part of the transaction. Example, when you deal with Amazon, Amazon is controller because Amazon is taking your data, Amazon is storing your data, Amazon is determining what should be collected from your site. Amazon, in addition, Amazon is processing partially a part of your data. However, like knowing your, your purchasing trends, this is Amazon. So Amazon, in this case, Amazon is a controller and the processor as well. However, when you apply your credit card to do business online or to, to uh, purchase a book, for example, from Amazon. In this case, uh, Amazon uh, is sending your credit card information for the bank to charge your credit card with an amount of money to, to have this transaction done. In this case, the bank is only processor in this part of the transaction. This is just a very fast explanation about the concept. So we have wide range of terminologies that could be used to protect your data security and the privacy as well. We have encryption, and I think it's easy for all security professional. And we have some non, uh, let us say, famous definition or some uh, non-famous uh, terminologies to protect your privacy and your security as well, like pseudonymization, like tokenization, like anonymization. We have many techniques and masking. Again, we have pseudonymization. This one, the yellow, the yellow word. This one pseudonymization, and we have tokenization, we have masking, okay, 
uh, uh, and many other techniques. In this case, if you are using anonymization, pseudonymization, tokenization, or masking, in this case, you can keep the data with no consent from the person owning the data because data got anonymized. And instead of saying, Adil, uh, for example, is uh, Egyptian, Adil has like uh, 47 years, Adil uh, passport number is X. In this case, we will remove any direct identifiers. We will remove any, but we will say we have a security professional from Egypt. He has 47 years, okay, and he is certified XYZ of certification. In this case, we have no direct identifier. However, maybe one of the attractive facts you can, uh, you, I would like to tell you about, uh, an American research detected that after having 15 direct, uh, sorry, 15 indirect identifier, 15 indirect identifier with 99 point something percent, they could retrieve the, the real identity once again. This is a confirmed study and it's published. Okay. And finally, you have to have a uh, facility to inform the uh, data subject in case of data breach. Okay, so what is the technical requirement? Very fast, in a very fast way. Okay, you have definitely to have like a firewall, you have to have access control management. Okay, you have to have password management uh, control like complexity requirements, a hardening or regular software updates. Okay, and you have to have secure wiping or secure data uh, Positioning, you may have software or hardware wiping. Okay, so by the, so you have to maintain security for the data throughout the data life cycle. I mean to have security for the data at rest, in process, and in motion, and even while you are distracting the data or while you have this data, uh, when you have no need to maintain the data, you have to wipe the data so no one can recover the data uh, once again back. Okay. Some other normal security protection like uh, anti-malware encryption. I told you in this one, we have a, a very big uh, title about how to protect the data security and privacy data itself, like again, encryption, pseudonymization, anonymization, uh, and masking, and tokenization as well, okay? Definitely because all successful solutions are based on people process technology. You have to maintain the skill set of your staff. Training is one of the extreme important points, especially in security industry. Okay? You may have the latest technology, but when you have unskilled people, it looks like you have someone don't, does not know how to drive a car to, to drive the latest model of Mercedes maybe or Jaguar or whatever prestigious car, but you have no skilled driver to have uh, all benefits or all feature from this car. So you have to work on people process technology at, at, as well. This is why it's important to have like good reference for best practices, maybe ISO standard or, or similar, uh, moreover to train your staff. Physical security as well. And I would like to ask to go to the conclusion because my time is out. As I told you some references uh, for uh, privacy management in general or GDPR in general, okay, you may have the GDPR regulation itself, okay, you may have this one, this is a great vendor neutral uh, uh, and as well as technology independent reference for privacy management, it's Nest Privacy Framework, okay, for improving the privacy through the enterprise and risk management. And believe me, I know there is no time to tell you about all of these websites. However, this is really a great website. This one is the Data Privacy Authority in United Kingdom. This one is the Data Privacy Authority, Data Protection and the Privacy Authority in France. So if you have this one and that one, they have their own tools. They have their own sheets. They have like uh, templates you can use for free. It's really great tools support you to comply with GDPR in case you are thinking about complying with GDPR. And definitely one of the recently published 
uh, globally recognized standard in privacy management systems is ISO 27701. Th this is just released uh, late in 2019. It's about privacy management system. You know ISMS, Information Security Management System. Now we are speaking about privacy management system as an extension for ISO 27001. Okay. Finally, my advice for you is to think using NIST Cybersecurity Framework. What is NIST Cybersecurity Framework? Telling you simply to have the full capability to secure. It's not only protection. This is a big mistake. Many people, even some professionals, consider protection as a security. I mean access control, firewalls, password management, encryption. Okay, this is prevention of attacks and the protection against attacks. However, this protection is not the security. To have the full capability, you have to have the wide, the full range of capabilities, starting from identifying your critical assets, then you can identify your real risk, uh, let us say, your, uh, your real risk assessment, okay? Asset will lead to have the proper accurate risk assessment. When you identify the risk, you will provide the appropriate protection. So if you have confidentiality risk, you can use encryption. When you have availability risk, you can use redundancy uh, in, in internet connection, for example. When you have integrity risk, you can use hashing. So the proper protection technique should be mapped to the proper risk identification. Since we have no 100% secured system, you have to have detection capability for whatever something happened like zero day attack, okay? Now we have a threat hunting, we have uh, cyber threat, uh, identification, we have SOC technology, security operation center, and so on. If you detect it, it's not about detection, but you need to respond in the proper time and within the proper technique. And finally, your ultimate objective is to recover back for the normal business uh, status. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I exceed my session time by around three, four minutes. Uh, hope I, I hope I added something for your valuable knowledge and I highlighted the extreme risk of privacy uh, nowadays. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Adele, for that really insightful topic. I think uh, it really hit home for a lot of people in our audience because you talked about a lot of day-to-day -day technologies that all of us use, especially when it comes to apps, our regular apps, Facebook, and our social media handles, and the yeah. risk that they pose. Especially when you start talking about Facebook, we have all heard of the Cambridge Analytica hack that happened, not hack, the Cambridge Analytica scandal that happened in the United States. Yes. Very, very scary stuff. So I'm going to open up the floor for questions from our audience. So any questions, guys, for Mr. Adele before he signs off after that excellent session that he gave us? I'll wait about two minutes for questions before I bring on our next speaker. I think a lot of them were very interested or I would say surprised or caught off guard when you start talking about Facebook and the bots on Facebook. Very, very, okay. I would say scary. But again, it's the reality we have to face with. We have to deal with because it's services that we all use and everything is interconnected. You cannot keep anything personal with the internet around us. Uh, someone's asked, what about WhatsApp and its privacy? I'm sorry again, what, what's the question? What about WhatsApp and its privacy? WhatsApp. Okay, okay. Uh, if you remember, uh, I'm telling you and the, the person who asked the question, if you remember when Facebook acquired WhatsApp, we all users, in, uh, receive, uh, we're receiving a message asking you would like to integrate Facebook with WhatsApp. You know what is happening. Everything you are typing in WhatsApp is stored in what is named the data sets. These data sets will be processed. So now if you send a message for your colleague asking about what kind of Dell laptops you would, for example, you are uh, recommending for me if I would like or I plan to purchase a laptop, okay, you may find some apps about Dell uh, laptops in your Facebook because there is integration between uh, Facebook and between uh, and and the WhatsApp. It's all Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, Instagram, and what is the fourth one? If you remember, 
you remember uh, Facebook also acquired uh, a GIF website, animated GIF application, very famous one. I forgot the name. However, it's all integrated together, okay, to have uh, this one, uh, to, sorry, to, to have all data processed in a, in a one common uh, database. So for me, if you send anything through electronic medium, okay, it is, there is no guarantee of privacy. This is my personal experience after 25 years of dealing with information technology, and I have uh, like seven or eight uh, different certification in privacy, uh, like GDPR and the ISO 27701 uh, as well. Okay, so uh, never trust the technology when it comes to privacy. <laughs> this is my answer. Okay, thank you so much for that in-depth answer and how no matter what backend they claim to be using, we should still not trust it. We'll yes. all take that message forward when we start using our mobile phones on our, for our daily applications. Now, I'm sure there are a lot more questions people want to ask, but we are running out of time. Our next speaker is already mm -hmm. in and waiting. So thank you so much, Adele, for the very insightful and interesting session that took us through some of the biggest vulnerabilities that all of us face with our day-to-day -day applications. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye-bye.